I'm Dr. T and welcome to my office. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, which ionic compounds typically dissolve in water and which ones don't. Now to do this I want to make a few caveats. First, I'm going to be using the terms soluble and insoluble. In reality this is a continuum. Uh, we'll talk more about this and what we call a solubility constant uh, later on when we talk about equilibrium. But right now we're just going to say, hey, it's soluble if you can dissolve a lot of it in water relative to the amount of water, and insoluble if you really can't dissolve much in water. And I might wave a few hands on cases that are kind of in between. You will usually find this referred to as solubility rules. And now, the quick point, the rule here is in the scientific sense. These are general trends not necessarily offering an explanation. It's not that there isn't an explanation, it's just that's down a different rabbit hole that generally doesn't get jumped in. Okay, so to do this, uh, let's look at some common ions, uh, cations and uh, anions, and see which ones tend to prefer to be soluble and which ones tend to prefer to be insoluble. Well, for the cations on the soluble side, sodium, potassium, and ammonium are the classics. These tend to be nice and soluble. There are definitely exceptions, as I have learned to my uh, now hilarious, then not so, uh, experience. Uh, but that said, generally speaking, if you have a sodium salt, a potassium salt, or a ammonium salt, odds are it's going to be soluble. Now, for the anions, you've got a couple of anions that likewise, odds are these are going to be soluble in water. Uh, those are going to be things like the nitrates, which are kind of the gold standard, uh, the acetates and the sulfates. Now, there are exceptions. Uh, sulfates do tend to have some solubility issues involving the alkaline earth metals. Um, you know, once you get a plus two and a minus two together, those actually do tend to like to hang out and stay together. But, you know, they still dissolve at least somewhat for some of the alkaline earth metals. Also in the category of generally formed soluble salts are going to be your halogens. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine generally will form soluble salts with other cations, although silver, lead, and mercury uh, are notable exceptions to this rule. Fluorine uh, does also like to form uh, nice ionic compounds that are soluble, although the alkaline earths are quite often an exception here as well, as the fluoride does tend to form nice uh, insoluble salts with those, uh, at least some of them. Uh, now, as far as those ions that are typically insoluble, ones that you might get to dissolve in water, but odds are you won't. Uh, the classics are going to be your hydroxides, your oxides, although the caveat on the oxides, many oxides will react with water and turn themselves into hydroxides. So things like magnesium uh, oxide, the moment you get it wet, it's going to turn into magnesium hydroxide. It's going to grab some oxygens, or some hydrogens from the water. But most of your oxides, most of your hydroxides are going to stay insoluble. Now, things like sodium and potassium hydroxide, those dissolve beautifully, because once again, those sodium and potassium atoms, those love forming soluble salts. Additionally, your phosphates, your carbonates, uh, and your oxalates uh, also tend to form uh, fairly insoluble salts, as well as your sulfides. As some general rules of thumb that you can kind of just notice from patterns, plus one and minus one uh, cations typically are more likely going to be soluble uh, than those that are a plus two or a minus two. Uh, the stronger interactions tend to clump them together. That said, there's plenty of exceptions with this one, and when it comes to solubility rules, uh, for the general ones, it's just something you get to memorize. I wish there was a better way of doing it, but unfortunately, memorization in this case is about your best choice. That said, have a wonderful day.